Hi everybody, I'm back. It's Yolanda. And Lisa. Yay! <laughs> Finally, I got off my duff. I got I the uh, encaustic wax, that uh, technique that I wanted to show you. Someone, uh, a, a fellow YouTuber, several people have been asking me how I did this particular technique. I'm trying to angle this one. I just finished this today. I'm giving it to Lisa. And it's done with the a gloss super heavy gel to seal it because a lot of you folks don't realize I use crayons. Crayons are not the most reliable uh, medium to do encaustic wax with, but they are very practical for just starting out and figuring out if you like it. I like it a lot, so I might actually go and join the big guys and get the actual encaustic wax, <laughs> you know, pencils or, or whatever they call them, the sticks, or, or make my own. But um, I like the crayon technique, and I'm having a lot of fun exploring what you can and can't do with them. And I'll share them with you as I proceed. Now, like I said, this has just been done and finished. What you're going to need is just get one iron. It has to be solely used just for this. You cannot mm -hmm. use this to do your clothes, folks. Mm -hmm. It does smoke when you put the uh, crayons on it or even the encaustic wax. It will produce a smoke, so be in a well-ventilated area or a place that can have no smoke alarms that will ring <laughs> and go off while you're doing it. I put it on a low-medium setting, as I show you. For this here, I picked two crayons. It would be nice if I took it out of the sharpener two crayons just for the heck of it. I peel the paper back far enough so that I can deal with them. I also have a torn up t-shirt because you're going to need it to wipe off the iron while it's hot. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now she keeps is show, <laughs> I'm going to show you what I do. I apply it while the iron is hot. As you see it's melting right now. Okay, It melts right on and I put it on a piece of glossy paper what you would normally do with the Tim Holtz inks and you just smush it around a little bit to get a, any kind of pattern it really has a mind of its own then you wind up taking your iron and put it on a blank piece of 12 by 12 paper and get the excess wax off while the iron is still on a low setting you take your piece of torn up t-shirt and wipe off the excess off your iron. Mm -hmm. It really helps not so it doesn't smoke that much. So I did that. Now you're ready for the next color. The iron is still on low. I don't know if you can see it. I'm, I'm really horrible at this. At least it's so much better at it than I am. But anyway, it's on low. You're fine. And here is the second color. You can use as many colors as you want, but understand when you work with these colors, you have to let the first color dry and then apply the second one or third. But if you start to press into one another, they will create another color for you. Hmm. Tertiary. That might be interesting. So here we go. I'm putting the green down. Ooh. And I'm getting some more. I need some more here. Can't see what you're doing, but that's okay. We'll see what you're doing. Let's see. I don't know if that really, if you can see it well Ooh, enough now. Yeah. There's the pink, the green, and when the green and the pink came together, they made another happy muddy color. <laughs> but I happen to like the color of mud, <laughs> so it works for me. <laughs> so now I'm going to take the iron and put it again on the 12 by 12. Now, cleaning it off, right? I'm cleaning it off. Okay. Realize, save this paper that you're working with because you always put your 12 by 12 paper down before you start to do your encaustic wax technique. You can use it later in another art project. So now what I'm going to do is clean off the iron while it's hot. Cute. Setting on low. I'm going to have to put an annotation so people don't go whoosh and, <laughs> and bring this <laughs> lesson right here with the steps. No. <laughs> but um, now I'm going to shut off the iron. <laughs> Let's go back to the whoosh part. That was funny. <laughs> now with this, you want to seal crayons because it will flake off. They have a tendency to flake off real easy after age and time and moisture, humidity, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to use on this case um, a matte gel. It doesn't matter what brand you get, just something you're comfortable with, just get it. I use Liquitex, but that doesn't mean everybody has to get Liquitex. So I know this brush looks beat up, but it's old faithful. It's, it's, used. it's used, it's wide. 
I can get it to do the job I need it to do. So then you just put it on to your project. A good healthy amount. And what the matte gel will produce is a flat finish. On the one that I gave to Lisa, I used the gloss because I like shine. I really like things to be shiny. And you'll just put enough on there so that you can get the whole project covered. You'll wipe off the excess. And then you'll set it aside to dry. <coughs> and that's really it. You want to make sure that that it's all that it's all covered up. Right now it's horribly streaked, but when it's done, it'll be finished. And I'm going to do something that's probably going to gross you all out. <laughs> Take my finger right over it and make it a smooth finish. <laughs> okay, we're grossed out. <laughs> so that you won't have the wavy lines. <laughs> ah, there we go. And the funny thing is, I'll play with the matte gel and the super gel, but Lord help me if I try to play with the uh, tacky glue, I go running for the hills. <laughs> At least I can tell you this. But anyway, that's, that's the finished product. You set it to side and dry. So again, going over the materials you'll need, you'll need a wide brush to spread your matte gel. Something like this, or possibly bigger. You'll need a 12 by 12 piece of paper. It doesn't matter. Take your worst paper, notepad paper that you have, your least favorite cane company or whatever paper you don't like. But that's kind of pretty. Just though. put it, just put it down that's first. Kind of pretty though. And get your hot iron, put it on low, and then just slowly but surely melt the wax crayon onto the iron one at a time. The colors. This here that we got down here. I'm going to be reusing this. <laughs> it's either going to go yeah, into something I right make now. for Lisa, myself, or another Where's project. That? Bring that one over so we can see. Now this one is the glossy one. Yeah. Like see, if you compare the glossy one, pretty. it really shimmers. Pretty, pretty. <laughs> whereas the matte, it looks wet, but when it dries, it's going to be super flat. It, it, will, it will almost look like you did nothing to it. And the crayon, you'll say, I only see crayon. No, you got to finish on there. Yeah. And that's it, folks. That's just the beginning of the encaustic wax techniques I'm going to be showing you. <laughs> Lisa's trying to help me keep in focus. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Take Stop care. Watching. Bye. Bye.